Welcome, sports fans, to the Prince William Ice Center, home of the George Mason University Patriots. I'm John Baranowski. With me is Philip Prevost. we got a great game for you tonight as the Christopher Newport University captains come to town. Probably the biggest game on the schedule, at least thus far, and uh, we're pumped about it. We are pumped, and the Masons are coming off a uh, disappointing loss against Liberty in their, uh, their own barn. Uh, it was an early game last weekend, 10.30, uh, because of homecoming. Uh, it was tied after 2.00. Uh, not tied after two, but it was tied almost after two until about .7 seconds left uh, where Liberty scored a goal and uh, they lost 4-2. So they're hoping to rebound against uh, Christopher Newport here, John. Right, and with a, such a big game on the schedule, a, a major contest in the Blue Ridge Hockey Conference, uh, this is big. Now, do you, do you have uh, what happened on the weekend prior where we are uh, since the last time we were seen? Because the last time we were on the air, we had uh, James Madison, which we beat 6-3. to three right after a 3 nothing win over the University of Delaware was the last time we were on the air here. Uh, yes, um, there was actually two games here uh, against Loyal and Salisbury. Uh, Loyal was at the uh, Ice World. Um, it was a division. Uh, Loyal was at the... Con Colonial Division, division. Champion. Thank you. Thank you. Colonial He's a math division. teacher, not English. Thank you, yes. Um, now was their first game. They said it was a very good game. Um, they lost Pouliot in that game to a knee injury in the first, so we're hopefully he's making a speedy recovery here. Um, Keith, uh, bigger, I'm going to say it wrong. Fagerquist? 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 Sorry, our goalie. I, oh, Wayland. That says Wayland. No. Oh, Keith Fagerquist. Yeah. I'm glad we're prepared. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, he was in that for uh, Mason as well for that game, too. So they, um, they lost in overtime in that one. It was tied, um, and they lost right in the last minute off a uh, defensive miscue according to the coach. And then we were at um, Harrington. For the Salisbury game. The Salisbury game. Whalen was in net for that one. And uh, they can pretty much control that game there. Uh, Cordova, Tony Cordova, had another hat trick. He just had one the week before against uh, Delaware, right? Yep. He yep. had all three goals in that game. All three goals. And um, period two, they traded goals back and forth. And then after that, um, they never looked back after... Uh, the second period, and three of the six goals they had in that game were on the uh, power play. They were three for eight on the power play that game, John. So we're looking at a, a three and two overall uh, schedule so far. Is that uh, does that sound correct? Yeah. It, yep. Yeah. So three and, three and two on two. the season. Um, a good rebound since those first couple games. Uh, when we saw them against University of North Carolina at Wilmington, not what we wanted to see. First period of the game against Delaware, uh, very sluggish. Since then, things have gone very well. Things have gone very well, and hopefully they can keep it up again tonight. Uh, Waylon, I believe, is in the net. He got the nod for tonight. Uh, see if he can bounce back from last week's 4-2 uh, loss to Liberty. All right, well, let's uh, see what happens. We'll see the drop of the puck and the rest of the action right after this. Welcome back, sports fans. George Mason University versus Christopher Newport University starts now. Puck drawn into the near side, into the George Mason zone, off the face-off win. They're going to play it off from those far side boards. But up along the far side, it goes to Seve Cordova. He'll send a hard wrap around, come through for, I believe that's Dylan Talbot. Yes, indeed, who was working that in the corner. Comes up, coughed up for Christopher Newport. Back the other way, it comes to T.J. Corvetti. Corvetti centering pass right back, quick shot. Ooh, and moving the wrong way was Wayland. Ice just a bit too slick in that one. The shot came from Shane Keel. He got fooled on that one. Back along this near side it goes. Played up by Nick Baker. Baker will send it ahead for, well, it, it's in the 17 sweater, and we assume that's Joe Pouliot. I'll double check 
on the score sheet and see if that is, in fact, Pouliot. Has a quick play in front. Knocked down. Yes, Pouliot is back, and he will get the puck right now. We were told he had a knee injury, and I, I guess I suspected something far worse. It's good to see him back out on the ice. And Pouliot will battle in this near side corner of the captain's zone. Yes, they are the Christopher Newport captains. And it comes back to the near side. Forced back in by Ryan Pejal. Round the Hornet goes over the far side up and out. Brian Bach will stop it. Carry it back to his own blue line before playing it up that far side. Sent in by David Guiney. Christopher Newport will get it back. Over the far side is played up by Ryan Brown. Brown from behind his own net. A little bit of pressure on coming from Guiney. Has played out to center red and sent right back in by Pejal. Brown behind the net. Picked up by Dylan Gear. Forced in front by Dan Vecchio. Vecchio trying to get it away at the near side half boards now. Teaming up with Alex Mandeville to try and take it away from the captains. It's round behind the back of the net. Stopped up. Far side by Bach. He takes the shot. It sails wide. Come back to the near side on the rebound. Garrett Pohl chasing after it. He forces it ahead to Mandeville. Mandeville looks in. Gets it through. No, he couldn't get it connected with Egan. He lost the biscuit. They're going to have a puck up and out of play. A little bit of pushing on the far side. Brian Bach. And whom? The captain of the captains. Oh, captain, my captain. Who is that? I want to say that's Caleb Dalterio. No, I'm going to say it's Kyle Yawn after a second look. I, I, I can't see the numbers. <laughs> my eyes are hurting from them. The, the, the blue and silver just does not help. 17.48 remains here in the first. No score. As off the faceoff, the captain will take it away. And then sent right up and out of play once more, this time off of Nick Baker. John Baranowski here with Philip Prevost on CrossIceFeed.com. Thank you for tuning in on the Cross Ice Feed. We'll be here uh, next week as well. And tomorrow, the Potomac Patriots will have a total of two games and followed by two on Sunday. Ron by the back of the net comes to the near side. TJ Corvetti will send it around behind the net over to the far side boards. Comes through there for Talbot. Talbot will send it around behind the net. Sevi Cordova digging at it on the near side. Tony Cordova will step up. He takes it. Sends it across the crease. I think he was trying to make a good bounce, but it works out to Baker, who keeps it in. Sevi Cordova will play it down in the corner. Tony was just a bit too close. <laughs> Sevi will slap it away from him, and Tony and Sevi are messing with him, and they're going to get called for a trip as uh, the man in the middle was not too pleased with uh, being made a fool. So Christopher Newport's going to go on the power play here, John, with 17.02 remaining in the first. I like to say about the shots, but it uh, looks like there might be something with the scoreboard. Uh, with shots on goal are not showing up on there right now. So uh, that could be a problem. I'm going to try to keep count today. I can't promise anything. Might not be keeping them. It happens, I guess. Played off for Drew Cohen off the face-off win. He'll play it over to Alex Howell. Quick shot in, steered away by Pejal. Tripping will be the call. We have another minute 46 remaining on that. It's Pejal in the near side corner. Coming in to take the hit is Howell. It's up to the near side for Cohen. Drew Cohen now to the near side. Boards will play it ahead for Howell. Up top to Cohen. To Howell on the near side half boards. He looks for an option. Can't seem to find it. We'll go cross ice all the way to Eric Reinfleisch. Reinfleisch again, far point. He puts it down low. Far side corner. The centering pass not going to get through to Rogers. Comes up to Reinfleisch and played away for Howell. Finally, the Patriots will be able to snap back to it. A good clear up and out. I believe that was Tyler Lovejoy who sent it up ice. We have a minute 10 remaining on the power play for the captains. A wholesale change on the PK here, John. To the near side it goes. Kyle Yawn, their leading scorer, will play it across ice. And now he'll get it right back. Chips it ahead. And playing it off will be Wayland to... Gutsy call right there as he uh, took the uh, went to play the puck over for Reinfleisch on the far side. I'm dumbfounded is what it is. Can't believe it worked. For Yawn in the near side corner. Surveys his options. Plays it up to the near side point for Cohen. Through it goes for Kiel. Kiel to the far side for Reinfleisch. Down low. Yawn. Centering through and it's oh, not going to be cleared away. Brian Bach had the chance at it but it went off of a skate. 
Forced ahead now it goes for Jeff Egan. He got it up and out of the zone. We have 20 seconds remaining on the power play for the captains. Shane Keel will play it in his own zone. Off of Cohen and now to Eric Reinfleisch. Ryan Fleisch will get it right back after the quick play to Jan. Lots of pressure on from Tony Cordova. Now Jan gets it back to the near side for Kiel. Takes a shot. Save made by Whalen. That was actually the first time that Christopher Newport actually had a decent shot on net there. And that come, came right after the power play uh, expired for them. So we're back to five aside hockey with 15 minutes even remaining here in the first. Face off, one back to the near side. Quick shot, that's from David Walsh. Sails well wide. Centering pass comes through for Dylan Talbot, who we've seen a whole lot more of in this game than we have uh, the past few contests we've broadcast. Back to the near side, it goes for Nick Baker. But Baker unable to keep a handle on it after the pressure there from Dalteria. Played over the far side. Shields will play it off to the boards. Shields will get it right back, stuck in his skates. He'll play around to the near side boards now. It comes for Baker. Nick Baker dangles his way ahead. Drives into the zone now. Looks to the outside, takes the shot. It went off of a stick and up into the netting. 14-21 remains in the first. No score. Mason's been having some good zone pressure there, John, but they just can't be getting anything towards the net right now. Um, that was the first shot they really had towards the net in the last couple minutes. We'll have the face off to the glove side of Eric Dumas. Haven't really had to mention him too much yet. He is the starting goaltender here for Christopher Newport. Captain will carry out to the near side. That was Brandon Mills who sent it up ice. Now back the other way. It'll go for Pejal. Over on that far side, boards. Howell battling for it. It is taken away by Guiney, but Guiney couldn't hang on for long after the long toss. It's back into captain territory. On that far side, it goes for Howell. Lovejoy will reach in, steal it away, and he'll send it back into the zone, but it's stopped quickly by TJ Corvetti. He'll send it over the far side. We have a real drawn-out battle at the captain's blue line. Finally breaking the stalemate will be Max Horner. Drives into the zone, sails one wide after the quick play from Brandon Mills. Corvetti, quick shot. It's underneath the pads, and I'm not sure how Whalen got over for it. He was definitely on the far side of the net when that shot was launched. Good way to get across. He was just hoping that didn't trickle in because he didn't actually get flat across the ice. It kind of bounced under his pads and kind of tried to put his leg under there to make sure it didn't go behind him. Kyle Yon will take the face off and he'll win it. Back to the near side it goes for Kevin Diner. Round behind the net. Garrett Pohl will have it for the Patriots. Pohl battling back for a try. Christopher Newport is trying to work it right in front. Trying to land the man on the doorstep from behind the net. Hasn't worked out yet. Mandeville on that near side boards. Played ahead for Egan. Egan will chip the backhand effort behind the net. Coming round now will be, who is that? I believe that is Guiney. No, I'm sorry. That's Dan Vecchio. Over the far side now. Back the other way for Christopher Newport. Garrett Pohl will pick his pocket. A great poke check. And now Mandeville has some room on the near side. He dangles once, twice. He's going to get knocked off the biscuit the third time. Near side it goes, Pole trying to dig at it. No, it's going to be taken away there by Max Horner. Cleared up and out. Dan Vecchio will have it in front of his own bench on the far side now. He'll clear it the length of the ice after he hits center red, giving George Mason time for a wholesale change. Twelve and a half minutes remain here in the first. No score on the cross ice feed. Back through it goes. Shane Keel dangles his way. Quick shot. Save made. Rebound with second one. They score. Alex Velosky comes in for the second rebound and manages to pop it in the back of the net. Just overpowering effort. You could hear it from the crowd how much they enjoyed that deke. And it was all downhill from there. Well, it was a little bit of a defensive breakdown there, John. And when Whalen went over to try to stop the puck, I think what, ha what happened was because the Christopher Newport player whiffed on that first shot that it just kind of threw him off guard. And as he was trying to stop that guy, the other guy's on the other side and popped right in. Oh, and the shots are back on the clock, so it's four to nothing in shots. Well, I Newport. think they started about five minutes in, so I think they started with a clean slate. Well, it actually matches my number, though, too. Oh, yeah? So. All right, well, I won't question that. Puck takes an odd bounce off the dasher. It's 12 minutes remaining here in the first, and it's one nothing Christopher Newport. 
It's played over to the far side. Captains will put the cross ice feed to the earboards where it goes Shane Keel. He'll send it cross ice again as he dumps it in. Played through for Danny Langley. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I know I got the pronunciation uh, from one of their players, and well, I'm not sure if I have it right. So we'll have a cross check coming. I believe it's going to be just against George Mason. I believe it's Aaron Shields going to the box. Yeah, that's yep. uh, how it's shaping up. Cross check for Aaron Shields. Yeah, unfortunately, I think in that in that situation, you should just call both of them. They both were jarring back and forth. You know, put both in the sim bin for two minutes and just let them cool off. Don't want to get out of hand. Hey, that's really the truth. And uh, Coach Hijack having a discussion with the officials to make sure that uh, it's clear next time. Yeah, put them both in. Played back around to the near side. Here comes for Ryan Brown. Brown, top of the slot, sends it over to the far side point. Carried now by David Walsh. Walsh will send it down into the corner. From that corner, comes back up to Walsh, far point. Now to the near point for Ryan Brown. Down low on the near side, it goes for, Ro for Howell. Howell takes a shot off the glove and wide. A dangerous play there. Like, not sure where that fluttering puck was going to go to. Played now for Mills, round behind the net. Howell trying to get back to it. Garrett Pohl stepping in, as is Brian Bach. Veloski will get the goal. Langlaw will get the assist. I imagine it's Keel with the second one. I didn't hear it. Keel got the third. Yeah, Keel got the second assist. Yep, it was Keel. Quick shot from the near side point. Blocker save made. Over the far side, cleared up, but not out. It's kept in as this power play continues with 53 seconds. Knocked a bit off, waiting for the public address. Cleared the length of the ice. A great clearing effort by the, by the George Mason Patriots. From behind their own net, they're going to work the breakout slowly as Vecchio applies just a little bit of pressure. It's going to be pushed ahead by Kyle Yon. They'll send over the far side for Walsh. Round of the near side, I guess it's cleared in to George Mason territory. Picked up there by Horner. Takes a shot. Save made by Whalen. He has that trap between the paddle and the glove. 22 seconds remain on the power play. You know, after that little series of events in front of Whalen's net, he looked a little shaken, you know, trying to stretch the neck out a little bit. Um, he, he looked awkward. That's the second time we've seen him look awkward. The first time he let a goal in, so. Face off one back to the near side. From the near point it goes for Cohen. Cohen now to Horner on the half boards. Poke check effort made. Pushed up but not out. That was Jeff Egan on the attempt. Back down into that corner. It goes intercepted by Vecchio and he sends it. And he's going to continue on it. We're going to have five aside hockey now as Vecchio continues to put a lot of pressure on. As that puck took an awkward bounce. He took a bit of a stick to the side of the cage there. Could not have been pleasant. It's over the far side. Bach will pinch in to send it back in. Tony Cordova will step up, being the man down low, and it comes back up and out. Sevi Cordova giving chase. He keeps it away from Kyle Yawn. To the near side it goes, as Talbot has a nice deke. It dangles around even his own player at that point. Goes to Sevi Cordova, who'll chip it into the zone, negating any icing calls. Horner will send it over the far side boards. Cleared up and out, ch chasing it down now will be Ashton Rogers, but getting there first will be Brian Bach, who backhands it the length of the ice. Another opportunity here this time for Langley, who had the second assist, uh, so the first assist on that one goal. That's back the other way now for Sevi Cordova. Cordova will flip it towards the net. It'll drop back behind, and he gives chase. Back to the near side. T.J. Corvetti sending it around for Louis Anderson. Addison. And Louis Anderson, someone else. Far side. Baker will send it in. Off the blocker low. And it's going to go into the corner for Louis Addison. To the near side corner it goes. Trying to get in there is Pouliot. Pouliot will actually get control of it after the fact. He'll send it round behind the net. Lovejoy jumping in after it. And it's going to be a puck out of play into that Christopher Newport bench. For the third time so far this game. 8.06 remains in the first. one nothing. Christopher Newport. And Mason has finally had a shot on goal there after uh, 
Almost 12 minutes in the first. They got their final first shot. Face off one by the captains. It's centered through now for Mills. Brandon Mills. He gets knocked off the biscuit, but the second opportunity shot came from Shane Keel. And Whalen makes the bigger save. Woo! He, he launched. He doesn't want that puck in the same zip code. I don't like this one. Get it out of here. <laughs> At first, he didn't know where it was. It, it looked like it went up to his pad or something like that. Uh, but Christopher Newport's bringing pressure right now. I mean, they've got some zone presence, and they're, they're taking it to the Masons. Patriots. Yeah, they're not the George Mason Masons. And back to the near side on the faceoff win. Patriots trying to dig at it. It will come out for Ryan Pejau. Pejau will clear it up off the high glass, but the captains will send it return to center. Cleared over the far side, it goes for Shields. Shields stymies the man and sends the puck in. It's sticked down by Ryan Brown. Behind the net, played through for David Walsh. Over to Brown. Cleared through. Jan will negate the icing into the near side. Shane Keel will drive in. He turns on the Jets for that one. Kid has got some speed. Pejau and now Pouliot with that puck as Keel will try and take it away from him. Cleared up and out over the stick of Eric Reinfleisch. All the way to the goaltender, Eric Dumas. To the near side, Christopher Newport working the breakout as George Mason gets the change. To the near side it goes. Reinfleisch will drive into it. Played off for Jan. Centering pass, quick save. But moving the wrong way on that one. Off a diner shot, but Whalen got it. Second one. That was stopped by Kyle Yon in front. Changed the tempo. From behind that quick shot, save again. That one came off of Dan Vecchio. He has to be hurting off of that slapper. Big hit on the far side. We have a, a George Mason player down. I believe it's Brian Bach. He will slowly climb his way into the bench. Cleared up and out for the uh, action near the puck. Over to the far side corner now. Cleared up and into the rafters. And with the puck out of play, Christopher Newport is working from behind the net. They're in Wayne Gretzky's office, feeding them up front, just feeding them and seeing what they can get. And I want to say, uh, Christopher Newport's backup goalie that's sitting on the bench has had more shots at his face than uh, uh, George Mason's got so far. I'm just pointing that out. But Brian Bach came back on the bench, and he was not happy there. He uh, slammed the stick down in frustration. Back to the near side corner in the captain's zone. Tony Cordova will clear it into the near side corner. It's going to be picked up by TJ Corvetti over to the far side boards. And now up and out. Played through. And now we have Max Horner one on one. Takes a shot. He scores. He got that one. Glove side high right over the shoulder. And Whalen is not happy. Uh, defenseman beside him. Not much help at that point. Uh, and whew. That's a bad turnover to make and uh, does not help. Now down two that goals to none. That was a wicked shot, too. Just, just. That's true. I mean, you, you got to take the hat off to uh, to the captains at that point. That was a, a good shot. But still down two zips. Six minutes remain. Centering pass stopped by Joe Pouliot. Pouliot looking to the outside. Takes the shot. That will be the second of the game. Recorded, anyways, for George Mason. Up, and no, it's not out to the bench, but we'll have it played ahead. Quick shot, sails wide, didn't get a number on who that is. That uh, was Alex Howell. Max Horner will get the goal. Did not hear an assist on that one. I didn't hear it either. I think it might have been unassisted. Puck chipped up and out of the zone. It goes over the far side now for Brian Bach. Good to see him back out on the ice. Doesn't look like he missed a shift. Near side it goes for Danny Longley. Ahead for Rogers. Rogers will send it over the far side where Howell will clear it in. Goes off of Whalen. Took an awkward bounce just off of Whalen. Stick right in front of him. Back into the neutral zone from their own blue line. The captains will work it over the far side. Stepping in was Dan Vecchio, but unable to move the man. Egan will try and play it ahead. It's intercepted quickly by Kyle Yon. And back to the near side boards. It's going to be sent in from David Walsh. Whalen lost his stick. He's rattled. Back behind the net. Comes for Dan Vecchio. Vecchio will force it up, but not out. He'll defer to Mandeville, who will drop it off to Egan before that happens. Caught out of the air by Christopher Newport. 
and sent back the other way. Now we have a two-on-two -two developing. Mandeville comes back and wrecks the man in the process. Through for Baker. Over to the far side now. Kyle Yawn applying a lot of pressure. Garrett Pohl, almost a deer in headlights at that one, so he couldn't seem to get a handle on the puck. 4-12 remains here in the first. 2 nothing. Christopher Newport. Far side, stopped in by D Dylan Talbot, and they're going to call him off sides. 4.05 remains. He tried to get away with that one, but he wasn't going to. Lines had a very good view on that. But you said, John, Waylon looks very uh, rattled out there right now. I mean, and I don't know if it's the ice. Maybe he's even a little bit too slick. I mean, he's had a lot of traffic in front of the net. Uh, it should be very uh, snowy in front of there. Well, that's one of the toughest things for goaltenders to do, to simply, you got to let that goal go. You can't think about it. You, ha you have to have... The uh, memory of a goldfish sometimes goes over the far side. Or a middle school. Trying to center it through for Dalterio. Quick shot, save made by Whalen. I said, or maybe a middle schooler for the attention span memory. No comment. Anyways, as, uh, yes, we're teachers. As, uh, I mean, I've seen coaches pull goaltenders just for a period, until the end of the period just to get them calmed down and uh, back on their game. And I would not be surprised if we see that at some point, unless Wayland's play continues. We'll see, we'll see if he can hold out to the intermission, and then I think things will improve. That's in the captain's zone over the far side. 3.30 remains here in the first. Playing pitch and catch, finally. Brian Fleisch will play it ahead for Dalterio, who sends it through for Longley. Stepping up will be Dylan Talbot, who manages to get it away, but no, it's played from back behind the net. Quick shot, he scores. Caleb Dalterio will launch it. Uh, top shelf, that was glove side again over the shoulder. Looked an awful lot like that last one. Again, a feed from uh, behind the net. This time it works. That one just caught him off guard. He wasn't ready for it. Um, and it was, it was a quick shot. I mean, and just hit the post, right? Going right in, so... Um, but it's not always Waylon's fault here, too. His defense is not helping him out whatsoever right now. No, and Waylon has been hung out to dry, and it's the question is, can he remain composed come the second period? That's going to be, I mean, we saw a very different team come out from the first and the second against Delaware, another team in blue, as uh, played over the far side. They weren't down 3 nothing at that point, John. That's, that's, that's the be difference. A factor. Stepping up, the shot came from Corvetti, save made. Langley will have the assist. Doesn't think there's going to be a second one. And Caleb Dalterio got the goal, of course. So back through it comes for Brandon Mills. Mills, Pohl will take it away from him. He's over the far side. Garrett Pohl pushing up ice. Will finally clear it in. Lovejoy able to get to it. Garrett Pohl will hold it in. Quick shot. Bouncing puck as Lovejoy is, rolls off the back of the goaltender. Over the far side, Mandeville. He gets knocked off the biscuit. Crowd getting into it. Back to the near side it goes. Chipped in by Nick Baker. Just over two minutes remain here in the first. Lovejoy's just making the goal, sure the goalie was still there. Played through, and it's going to come ahead for Ashton Rogers. Rogers will get knocked off the biscuit. Shields will step in. And now Egan will play it up, but not out. It's kept in by uh, Dylan Gare. We're going to have a puck out of play right after that. 155 remains in the first, three nothing. Christopher Newport over the George Mason University Patriots. Face off one by the Patriots over the far side, cleared up and out. And Christopher Newport will go back to setting up shot. Now it comes over to the far side boards. They work their breakout from their own zone. To the near side it goes for Shane Keel. Keel launches the shot. I don't know if he got too much on that one or if it caught a stick, but it's up and out of play. Minute 36. The Patriots just are begging for the intermission at this point. They're just sluggish out there right now. If you look at the bench, you know, kind of heads down. It's quiet, you know. No one's trying to really get the team built up right now. Yet, yeah, and again, it's all about holding on, and then they can use the intermission to regroup and have something to work on and start clean slate coming out. Uh, it's played for Pei Zhao behind his own net. Minute 25 remains until the first intermission. Over to the far side, sent up for Andrew Nash. Nash will clear it, but it's taken back by the captains. To the near side, Keel will play it in, but it's going to be sent right back by Tony Cordova. 
From behind his own net, Walsh will play it and will pitch and catch from the defense. Back up to the near side, it goes for Keel. Pejal takes the shot, save made. That's over the far side, it goes for Nash. Quick shot, rebound comes for Seve Cordova. He dangles in front, no one there to help him finish. It's out to Pejal, near side point. 45 seconds remains in the period. Right in front for Cordova, he scores! Up from the ashes grow the roses of success. A tic-tac-toe puts Seve Cordova's puck in the back of the net. It's 3-1. to one. That's something you can hang your hat on. Yeah, I mean, that's a killer for Newport. Uh, giving that goal up a lot with 40 seconds left in the period. Hopefully this, you know, hopefully for Waylon, that clears his head. Like, okay, no, this is manageable now. Just got to hold down the fort. Shots on goal, Reed 12 to 3, but I think it's a little closer to 12 to 6. Uh, I think they were a little, a little too lenient on Newport on some of those shots, but uh, hey, I, I have a very different perspective than the scorekeeper's box. Cordova gets the goal. Tony gets the assist. And Dylan Talbot will get the second assist, so that line gets one apiece. 14 seconds remain here in the first as it's cleared back into the captain's zone. Just 10 seconds remain, and I think it's going to be finished out proper. No, it's going to be something by Lovejoy. He's got five seconds to work with, and that's how it's going to wrap up finally. 3-1 your score. Thought it was going to be pretty dismal going into that intermission. Well, now we actually have something to talk about. We'll send you to a quick commercial break, and we'll come back with the intermission right after this. Welcome back, sports fans. John Baranowski here with Philip Prevost. Uh, was looking pretty bleak going into the first intermission, but a uh, glimmer of hope. A glimmer of hope in the last 40 seconds. Yeah, all you need is that one to start everything, and uh, it's it's a whole new game right now. I mean, they're only down by two. The, the old wise tale is the two-goal lead is the worst lead to have in hockey, and we're, we're hoping tonight that it's a true for George Mason. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, it's uh, all about cracking that goose egg is what I always talk about. You, you make it sure that the goalie is not invulnerable. You know, you actually get to see, yes, we can score on these guys. Yes, we can get in behind the defense. Yes, we can put the puck in the back of the net. So now they go into that locker room, and uh, hopefully uh, Waylon's going to be calmed down. The team's going to be pumped up, and we'll see if they can come out and make a big difference in the second. Yeah, and the, the Patriots actually didn't look that bad in the beginning of the period. No. They actually had some good pressure. They just couldn't get the puck towards the net whatsoever. And, I mean, it... According to the scoreboard here, they only recorded a shot, you know, 12 minutes in. But um, I think we have they had a couple more than that. I want to say uh, it's six. They have three on the board, but, but I'm I, estimating. I mean, and I don't think it's a Mason either. But I mean, the goalie uh, he hasn't had that much action either. So that might all they all, you know, surprise them a little bit. You know, lull them uh, into a false sense of security. Right, and you know the worst. The worst time for a goalie is when he's not seeing a lot of action. I mean, look at Halak for uh, or the Islanders now. I mean, all over. The, the the way you would beat him in the playoffs if you didn't shoot more than 20 shots at him in a game. If you were over 20, you lost, and that was the statistics. So, um, they might be the way that the Patriots need to handle this game. Just you know, take your shots very specifically. Is what you're saying. Don't Qu don't just throw it at the net. Quantity versus quality. No, no, no. Quantity versus quantity. There you yeah, go. There you go. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I mean that might be the key to this to this contest because it's been two turnovers have been the two of the goals, and the third was working from behind the net. And Christopher Newport has been excellent down behind Waylon, you know, setting up a man there in, in Wayne Gretzky's office. And just sending them out either side and waiting for the one-timers. And they had managed to get one for uh, Caleb Dalterio. Uh, really, it's it's something they're going to have to stop. Yeah, the defense has got to help Waylon out. It just got to. I mean, two of those goals that went in were based off, you know, just people being on the defense. It's just, you, you can't do that. You can't let your goalie hang out there to dry, you know. Well, uh, we'll see what the difference is. We know that there's a glimmer of hope. And that, I mean, the momentum means so much in hockey more than any other sport. And that goal in the last minute always means a lot. So we'll see. We'll see if it's like the, the uh, 
uh, Delaware game, and maybe they can make this one uh, come back. Yeah. All right, it's three to one. I'm John Marinowski. He's Philip Ross. We'll see you the drop of the puck as uh, soon as they're out to play. Welcome back, sports fans. John Baranowski here with Philip Prevost for the second period of play. 3-1 your score. As George Mason will win the faceoff. Back now for Nick Baker. Baker will send it the length of the ice after trying to get it through to Tony Cordova. Come back now to the near side. Round behind the net it goes. Picked up by Ryan Fleisch. Ryan Fleisch will send it back to the near side corner. And Patriots trying to double down on that uh, bit of an errant pass. Is coming back around. Ashton, uh, sorry, no, that was uh, Dylan Talbot, wrong roster there. Try to get it through, but it's back the other way now, and captains will try to work it up and out, and they do. Baker will retrieve it, though, as T.J. Corvetti couldn't hang on. From his own zone, he clears it to the far side. Eric Ryan Fleisch will chase it down behind his own net. While that near side, Corvetti will have it stopped there by David Guiney, who tries to put it back deeper in the zone, but it's cleared up and out, and... Aaron Shields will chase it down now, back in his own zone. Just a minute in here, uh, into this second period, and already George Mason, a lot more pressure on. Goes now for uh, Shields. Stunned out for Caleb Del Tirio. Set, dropped it off for Corvetti. His shot went off of a boot. Corvetti will have it on the far side. Back down low to Del Tirio. Up top, it comes down to the near side now for Brown. Down low for Corvetti, round behind the net. Into the near set it goes. Del Tirio with it. Battling with it. Corvetti will have it. And Shields will come out the victor. Still battling for it. Del Tirio in with that fray. And now Tony Cordova will join it. And sit now to the near side boards. David Guiney will grab it. And he'll send the backhand pass to Joe Pouliot. Pouliot will send it into the zone. He's going to give chase down behind the net. But Ryan Brown just a bit too swift of skates. And we're going to have a delayed penalty call coming. I believe against George Mason. Yeah, they caught a slash on uh, 17. Well, that is Joe Pouliot going to the box. You know, last year we spent many times seeing Joe Pouliot come to the box. We got to know him very well. Yes, we were the scorekeeper in the uh, uh, scoreboard and music attendance for the Potomac Patriots. We still are. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and uh, Joe Pouliot goes from the Patriots to the Patriots. Hey, he came up to me. He's like, weren't you guys in the box last year? <laughs> like, oh, yeah, yeah, we were. He's like, yeah, we had some good conversations. We can't say him on the air, but we had some good ones. Yeah, you know. A quick play right in front. Save made by Whalen on the backhand effort there. I believe that was Jan who had the attempt. Minute 50 remains on the power play. Oh, big hit on the near side. Vecchio was the recipient of that one. It's round behind the net. Vecchio still giving chase. Lots of pressure on Drew Cohen. Cohen will send it down to the far side corner. Stopped off. Pejao will play it, but... It took a bounce right off of Cohen. Neither one was aware where it was. Up over to the far side it goes for Kyle Yawn. Far point. He plays to the near point for Ryan Fleisch. Ryan Fleisch will center it through. Quick play in front. Oh, it took a bounce off of a Patriot. And Waylands manages to make the save. Minute 19 remains now on the penalty kill for the Patriots. So far, I mean, the, the Patriots really... I mean, they could be doing... They could be doing a little bit more right now, but at least they're not doing worse. I mean, it's not like they're still bleeding, so at least they put the Band-Aid on right now. David Walsh from the near point puts it down on the near side half boards. Walsh unable to keep it in on that second effort. Round behind the net. Ryan Brown will retrieve it and plays to the near side. Alex Howell will come to the near side. Back to Brown. Brown delivers it to the far side. Back it comes for Ryan Brown. Ball on the near side. Comes back now through. Over the far side board, Shane Keel will send it round the horn. 38 seconds remains on the power play for the captains as it comes up for David Walsh. Lovejoy will slap it away and a gassed Patriots team. No, they're going to stay on. I'm impressed. They were moving slowly there. As it cleared back over that far side, Garrett Pohl. We'll dig down deep for a little bit of extra, and he'll clear it up and out. It's stopped by Brown, but he's unable to get a handle on it. Comes all the way back to his own blue line. Lots of pressure on from Lovejoy now. Hand it off to David Walsh. Now up to Keel. 
to Brown. Seven seconds remains on the power play as Brown is knocked off the puck. Langlaw going after it. Back up to Keel. He takes a shot. Oh, a diving effort there came from Danny Gassel. Good work there. Back to the near side. Pouliot knocks it home, so we have five-a-side hockey once more. Ahead, and it's knocked in by Mandeville, negating any icing. It's up into the bench, and that was a hard shot to go into the bench. You find cover at that point. Yeah, you can definitely hear the referee say no change on that one. He was a bit excited after that. Uh, so once again, the PK has stood strong. 5-on-5, not so much so far, but I mean, hey, you got to look at the positives where you got the positives, and that's where you got one right there. Face off one by Christopher Newport. This comes back to the near side. Comes through as it played off from Pei Zhao and ahead for Gaini. But it's taken away by the captains. It's back to the near side. Velosky, who had the first goal in this contest. Back through it goes as Pouliot will knock a man down and looking for a call. We're not going to get it. Cleared up and out. Chasing it down will be Aaron Shields. Cleared back. Shields will go after it again. Far side corner. Has a bouncing puck too far for Paige. Zhao is going to be retrieved by Langlaw. Digging for it. Mandeville trying to help out that play as Guiney will go down hard. Trying to draw a trip. He won't get it. Far side it goes for Shields. Shields pressured. Knocks it off the high glass. Up and out. Good play there. And cleared back in the near side corner. Oh, big hit at center. Mandeville and David Walsh. I think I was well behind the play. I don't know if we even got it on camera. But it goes over the far side for Cordova. Tony Cordova will send it around the horn. Near side it goes. Pejal. He clears it down low. It's going to be played off by TJ Corvetti. Tipped from the far side. It goes for Kyle Yawn. Yawn. Beside him is Velosky. Velosky takes a shot. Save it on the stick. Rebound comes back through. And it's taken away by the defense of Pejal. The second opportunity, Bach will take it. No, it's back for Velosky. shoots, he scores. And it went glove side high again and frozen in place was Wayland. He miscalculated just a bit and that easy, it's four to one. At that point, John, the Patriots were trying to outman Christopher Newport. They were trying to be physical and I think that took away from their game there. They just, they got so concerned with that and a breakdown and uh, a lot of, bodies in front of Wayland and it's now 4-1. It was the Darius Kasparitis effect. You know, you end up going for the bodies and not the puck and bad things will happen eventually. You have to have at least somebody trying to cover that. I believe it was only Jan and, and um, Velosky down low for that whole thing. Oh, nearly a wraparound effort from Delteria. No, I'm sorry, that was Mills. Uh, un re uh, not ready for it was Wayland. Velosky will get a second. Yon will get the assist, and that's going to be it. Far side corner it goes. Guiney digging after it. He gets his stick stuck in the dashers there. And come back to the near side for Bach. Bach battling for that puck. Comes around behind the net. Still with it. Has a handle on it. Finally trying to set up shot. Puts it up top to Mandeville. Bouncing puck. Kept in. Takes his shot. It got caught up in traffic. Guiney had a piece of it, I think. As it's played to the near side, it's up and out of the zone. Lovejoy will have possession, though. Call from the net, I-95. <laughs> traffic. There's, there's certainly a lot of traffic in front of that net. Yeah, it's, it's I-95. I like it. Back through it goes. Near side it goes for Kyle Yon. Yon along the outside. Has it knocked off a stick by Shields. Shields will come up with it. He goes around behind the net and over the far side. Pushed ahead. Jeff Egan will take up the banner. Drops it off to Mandeville. Mandeville looks to dangle. Can't get it a second time. It's back to the near side for Baker. Baker will send it down low. Hits off the official. And now off the side of the cage. Behind the net goes Dan Vecchio. Puts himself into a man and back down to the near side. Cleared up and out. Dan Baker will grab it. I'm sorry, Nick Baker. What am I saying? I'm combining players now. Big hit as he comes into the zone. And Christopher Newport will grab it back. Well, that near side, played up by Tony Cordova. He got his pocket picked. Howell, quick shot, save made. They're going to have a penalty called a trip coming against, I believe, Newport. 
that, that's the first power play that uh, the Masons are going to get here right now. I believe so. And they need it because they have not had a shot on net yet. It is 12.30 left in the second. Oh, they're going co coincidental. Okay. Yeah, so much for that. It's four on four. A lot of ice now, though. Got to look at the glass is not half empty, half full thing. As long as the glass is still there, we'll have something to talk about. It might require something a little stronger after the game. <laughs> it never says full of what. What is the glass full of? Hopes and dreams, imagination. I mean, what, what if it's filled with something awful? Do you want it half full? As it's back behind that, we will have four on four. <coughs> Not sure what they got Egan for, but uh, we'll find out. Has it played over the far side for Velosky. He has his pocket picked. It's taken away there. Played off for uh, I believe that was Seve Cordova. Up and out. We're going to have an icing call on the four on four against Christopher Newport. Uh, so while we're switching uh, sides of the ice, just a little bit of background about Christopher Newport. Uh, I was doing a little research today, and he was one of the original uh, English colonists uh, for the. Um, Jamestown. Yeah, he was the captain of the ship that brought the uh, English settlers to Jamestown in 1607. Bit of a big deal. Not that George Mason wasn't uh, one of the founding fathers and one of the first to really take up the banner of human rights. It was cleared back into Newport Territory. Minute 14 remains on the four on four. Sevi Cordova centers for Tony. Bouncing puck. Tony couldn't hang on to that one. Just too much traffic. Sevi will have it behind the net. Trying to play to Tony, up to Baker. Baker looks for it. Oh, and he just couldn't get a handle on it to take the shot. Waited too long. Goes now for Garrett Pohl. Pohl takes the shot, bouncing puck. Sevy, they get back to it. He's knocked down from behind. No call. Near side for Corvetti. Corvetti will play to the far side for Velosky. Garrett Pohl will step up and slap it away. 42 seconds remains on the four on four. Corvetti with the puck from center ice. We'll play it now. On the near side boards, it's played back by the Patriots. Lovejoy, long toss to the blue line. So over Sevy Cordova, Cordova will then go off. Newport will work from their own zone. Up to the near side, it goes for Howell. Howell centers it through for Mills. Mills centering pass, it's knocked away there. Picked up by Lovejoy. Just nine seconds remain in the four on four. Clear the length of the ice. I believe we're going to have an icing call. No, they're going to negate it because it touched the goaltender. And uh, Dumas was not pleased to hit just the shaft of his stick by just a little bit. Mills, now in Patriot territory, loses the biscuit off of Jeff Egan. We have five-a-side hockey once more. Goes off of Dalterio. Dalterio from behind the net. Lots of pressure on from Shields, and now Pejau will step into it. I think George Mason has finally isolated that man behind the net play. Back through for Egan. Egan will chip it around the player, but he can't get back to it. Not yet. Back through it goes. Now for Mandeville. Dangles. Puts it back. Trying to find Egan. Up to Shields. Taking the shot. Save it off the blocker low. Near side for Vecchio. We have a delayed penalty call coming against Newport. Puck digging for it. Back behind the net. Finally will come loose. And while they're going to say Christopher Newport had possession, debatable. But hey, we'll get the penalty call anyway. Interference the call. 9.45 remaining here in the second. 4-1 your score in favor of Christopher Newport. Going out before the game, after the game, for the game, go to Glory Days Grill. Plenty of TVs, good food, and the game always on. Official sports restaurant of the George Mason University Patriots. www.glorydaysgrill.com And uh, Newport's goalie wasn't happy with that, Dressler. He was talking to the... Uh was talking to the lines, he's nice talking to the referee about something. Uh, he's not liking something out there right now. Base off one by the Patriots. As they will be on the power play in the box is Drew Cohen. Quick shot off the one-time effort. I was waiting for the public address. Interference the call on Cohen. Save made by Dumas. Multitasking.
one of the best looks I've seen all night from George Mason here. Certainly a set play, yeah. Love the face off to the other side this time. Tony Cordova will win it. Back to Nick Baker, and over the far side it goes for that's Talbot. Back on the near side. Ooh, we have the t shirt toss going on to the fans. That's certainly will get them going. Comes back for Nick Baker to the near side. Stolen away by Yawn. Yawn will play it off for Diner. Diner all alone. Looks dangled. Shot save made Wayland. Defense tried to slap it away. Either way, went to the near side corner. The short handed attempt steered aside. Back to TJ Corvetti on the near side. Cleared up. Oh, and a long toss on to Yawn. He's in behind the fence. He shoots. He scores. And there's a lot of Newport players here as Kyle Yawn was playing the Yager role, sitting at the blue line and slapped it home. 5 1 shorthanded. Uh, see, to me, he looked a little offside to me, but I guess not. I only got to catch a second of it, you know, following it back. Yeah, cherry picking a little bit. But. Well, yeah, yeah. The Army Yager made that role famous, really. Uh, Standing on the enemy blue line, waiting for a puck back behind the play. He said, he said, made. He's still doing it. Well, gosh. Yes, for, for whatever curse is making Yarmir Yager play for the rest of eternity. He wants to play till he's 50. Good God. Back to the near side. He has men's leagues for that. There are plenty. He can play till over, he's over 80. I've seen them. Bouncing puck in front. Taken away there. Dumas had uh, the save there. Door closed. Okay, so Cordevi, uh, Corvetti... We'll get the assist on Jan's goal. 8.24 remains here in the second. It's 5-1. 35 seconds remains on the power play for George Mason. Back to the near side it goes. Baker can't get a handle on his back the other way for Alex Howell. No, stepping in will be Mandeville. Two big shorthanded attempts. The second will lead to a goal. Near side, Sevi Cordova tries to center it through for Tony. Nothing doing. Up and out. Talbot from his own blue line. 16 seconds remain on the power play. Baker. Into the zone. From the corner. Drops it off to Sevy at the half boards. Up top to Mandeville. Takes the shot. Stick save. Back to the near set. It goes for Sevy. Down low. Tony Cordova. Trying to play in front. Lots of pressure on from Corbetti. And we have the end of the man advantage. Clear. Trying to get another chance through for Shane Keel. Nothing doing. Brandon Mills. Trying to play it away there. Quick shot. Save. Whalen is going to say, let's stop the bleeding, let's calm it down, and let's uh, let's regroup. And you know what? It's, you can just feel it on their side. They're just... You don't want to give up yet. You don't. There's still plenty of hockey left, but with 5-1 lead right now for Chris, Christopher Newport. Uh, Mason's not showing too much heart at the moment. 7.26 remains here in the second. 5-1 your score in favor of Christopher Newport. Near side it goes for Guiney. Down into the corner. It's going to be picked up there by Puglia. Puglia bouncing puck in front. Lots of holding going on. Philo come back to Lovejoy. Lovejoy has it taken off of his stick. Up top now for Pejao. Pejao takes the slap to the slap pass. Gets it through to Guiney. Intercepted there. Oh, and we're going to have a hook called. But there was holding all the way. Longley grabbed the stick in his side. He's going to hold on. And, well... He's going to be at uh, the benefit of the doubt. Comes back down to Langlois. We'll have the delayed penalty call coming against George Mason. He centers through to Keel. Keel gets knocked off the puck. Bouncing back. And it's going to be played again. George Mason can't get possession. Bouncing puck two, three times. Linesman very slow to blow the whistle on that one. I thought for sure George Mason. Let's put it this way. If Christopher Newport had possession on the last one to end that man advantage, they had it there. Yeah, that just uh, they let it go too far. I mean, consistent. If you're going to be long, if you're going to be slow on the whistle, be slow on the whistle. If you're going to be quick on it, be quick on it. Consistency's all I ask. Yes, consistency. And you know what? That penalty completely out of frustration, holding going like you said along the way, and just frustration really hooked him. And like, like I mean, he he played smart. He felt a stick in his armpit, and he, he just held on to it. Should be a hold going as well, but we're not going to get it. In the box is listed as number two, Tarek Zagade. The save made by Whalen off of that opportunity. 13 seconds into this uh, power play for the captains.
Oh, no, it is Guiney. It's just mislabeled on the scoreboard. Back along the near side, it goes for Walsh. Walsh on the half boards. Plays it cross ice. Gets it through to Horner. Horner puts it up top for Brown. To Walsh. Down low, he finds Brandon Mills. Oh, across the crease it went. Slapped up, but not out. Second chance there. Daniel Gassel will grab it. He comes back on the near side, killing time on the shorthanded effort. Swings round behind the net. He'll play it back for Nick Baker at center red. Baker will clear it in. Chasing after it will be David Walsh. Hit from Vecchio as it comes back now. Near side boards, picked up by Kevin Diner. Diner will play it ahead for Kyle Yawn. And it's cleared over to the far side boards. Back to the near side. Kevin Diner carries the mail. Takes the shot and went off with a stick of pole. Up, but not out of play. Bouncing puck. Nick Baker will grab it. Can he get it away? He does, but it goes right to the stick of David Walsh. 36 seconds remains on the man advantage for Newport. Quick pass. Blocked away by the diving effort there of Nick Baker. Cleared the length of the ice. 25 seconds remains on the power play for the captains. Near side it goes. Diner will clear it to the far side. Baker will grab it. Baker has his pocket picked by Del Tirio, who puts it on the near side boards. Sitting around the far side. Five seconds remain on the man advantage. That will be enough to clear it up and out all the way to the captain's blue line. Back to the center red. Goes for Howell. Bouncing puck off comes from Baker. Baker centering it through just a bit too far for Mike Morris. He's back on the near side. Christopher Newport, a little bit of miscommunication there, but they have plenty of time. Mike Morris giving some pressure. As it's played off for Brandon Mills. He'll clear it ahead. From his own blue line will be Aaron Shields. Shields won't be able to keep on it long. It goes for Ryan Brown. Back ahead for Dylan Talbot. It looks like we're going to have a nice sing call, and indeed we will, with four minutes even remaining here in the second. Five aside hockey once more, and it's five to one, your score in favor of Christopher Newport. If George, if George Mason's plan was to come out and get more pucks to the net, they're not really succeeding right now. Uh, according to the scoreboard, they only had two shots this whole period, and I think two, both of them came on the power play. I'll believe it. Shot goes well wide of the net. It comes back to the near side. Puck comes back along that near side. Pushed ahead by Louis Addison. Round behind the net it goes for Shields. Shields pushing it ahead, trying to play it through for Talbot. Down it goes for Pejao. He's going to try and work the breakout. A little bit of pressure coming from Ashton Rogers. The near side, Sevi Cordova. Ahead for Tony. In enemy territory now, puts the shot wide of the net. Bouncing puck goes to the far side where it's kept in by Shields. Goes off of a shin pad back to the near side. Pejao will retrieve it. Put it on that near side. Picked up by Cordova. That's Sevi over to Tony. Up top to it's on Pejao. Shields is on the far point. Round behind there and it goes. Lovejoy trying to get to it, but Corvetti will play it up, but not out. Shields will play it in. That time it is Shields. That goes for the captains, but as we were intercepted by Tony Cordova. Just under three minutes to play here in the second. So would the captain of the captains be a major then? He should be, shouldn't he? I just went with O Captain, my captain. I mean, that's in my head, that's what's playing as O Captain, my captain right now. Back around the near side for Pejao. Round behind the net. He'll be played over with Joe Pouliot from that far side corner. I wonder if they ever play a team named the Generals. Just pull rank on them. Back there is a it goes. team. Well, there are a few. Richmond. I was wondering. The Richmond Generals. Well, that, that's junior hockey. He's coming back now for Brian Bach. Do we, that is. I wonder if there's if anyone in the Blue. I don't think there's anyone in the Blue Ridge Hockey Conference, but I can't say I've looked. Over to the far side it goes. Garrett Pohl will play it. We have two minutes to play here in the second. 5 1 year score, Christopher Newport. Back behind the net, Eric Reinfleisch will play it around the near side boards. One for Kevin Diner. Well, I know we're going to look up in the intermission. That's uh, back through it goes. Played off to the near side corner, played up and out by Bach. Sent right back in by Drew Cohen. 
And down low it goes. Bach will try and force it through and over to the far side. Chipped up, but not out. Guiney will grab it from there. Guiney will push it towards the net. It's going to be played off to the side. Dumas will just get a little bit on it. Back around to the near side. Mandeville stepping up. Takes a shot from Bach, an easy save. Picked up by Guiney. Guiney will flip it in front. Oh, and a second off at Mandeville. Just wide of the post. Back to the near side. Kept in by Garrett Pohl. Yes, indeed, the glove will fly across the ice. Not entirely sure how that happened. But it looks like we're going to have a hand pass off of it. I think it was good two points. <laughs> That's a good distance on yeah, it. Yeah, good he, arc. he got some good distance on I have no idea what happened to make a glove sail across the zone. Oh, no, someone got kicked it out. Uh, someone used their stick and threw it Oh, out okay. Four. That, really, that should be uh, unsportsmanlike conduct, probably. But, oh, well. 106 remains here in the second. You know, well, I'm waiting for the day. You know how the goalies slap their stick down at the end of the power play, let the team know? I'm, wait, I'm sure it's happened. I'm waiting for the stick to just snap in half and just fly back, you know? <laughs> I've never seen it at the NHL level. Let's put it that way. I'm sure it's in, in the number of games of hockey that happened. I'm sure it's somewhere. Back through it goes. Baker unable to hold on to it. Shields dove at the puck, but... Uh, Unable to keep it in. Back through it goes. Now the near side. Corvetti will play it along the near side. Tony Cordova will get it back into the zone off his skate. We have 40 seconds remain here in the second. We didn't get the one minute, John. No, we didn't. Uh, not a, as much uh, desperation after the first intermission, but we're still down four goals, and we'll see if George Mason can mount a comeback here as it's cleared back in by David Guiney into the near side corner. 19 seconds remain as Tony Cordova will play it in front. No one on the doorstep to help him out. Shields will launch one up high. Bouncing puck off the back of the cage. Tony Cordova will have it with nine seconds left. Shields takes the shot. Bouncing puck sails wide. Five seconds remain. Again, can Shields step up? He'll play it off for Baker. Takes a shot. Save made. I tell you, if they can play the rest of the game like the end of the periods, George Mason would be winning this contest. We have some pushing and shoving going on at the end here. Those are going to be separated pretty quickly. Just relax. Don't do it. Uh, all right. Well, it's going to wrap it up for us uh, for the second period. I'm John Baranowski. He's Philip Prevost. We'll send you to the intermission report right after this. John Baranowski here with Philip Prevost for the second intermission report. 5 1 year score. We came in with a glimmer of hope in the last intermission. Yeah, glimmer is a little further off now. Yeah, the, the glimmer is at a very dim right now. Um, they came out, they were they looked decent again, like just like they did in the first period. They came out, they looked kinda okay in the beginning. Um, they did get one one power play. Yes. They did get one power play, and that didn't look that bad. I mean, that's where they got most of the shots for the period. So, at least they got some action on the goalie, but they only, according to the board, doubled their shots. Now they have six officially. Six officially, but I think they got a seventh one there at the end, so yeah. it must have not, it might have been right at the, when the, the buzzer rang. Um, uh. But I mean, they, they're, they're trying to stay physical still. Uh, it might take away from the game a little bit some, at times, but I mean, yeah, it, you have to try to do something. And that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to get in the head of the uh, captains. And that's just it. I mean, they're trying to play down behind the net. They do their best work from behind the net. That Tony to, to Seve, that Seve to Tony connection. connection. Make sure I got that right. Uh, they, I mean, they really do well from down low, and they haven't been able to get down there. They're getting muscled off the puck before they get there. They haven't gotten the turnovers they need. Um, the offense just hasn't been given a chance. It's been smothered before they even get there. Right. I mean, with the shots being 19-6 right now, yeah, they're getting smothered. I, I mean, you hate to say it, but that's just it. The, the offensive weapons that George Mason has have not been, they haven't had a chance to be deployed. They haven't gotten there yet because they, we just can't seem to get set up uh, in enemy territory. We can't get the, the puck movement going. We're knocked off of it too quickly. Yeah, I mean, actually, you know, the best part of that period was the 4 on 4. Um, they had some great pressure. Uh, unfortunately, neither team scored. Uh, but, I mean, at least they weren't 
some areas you need to work on, but there's some areas that you're okay on still. But it's not over yet. Four goals is not insurmountable. I've seen crazier things happen. Uh, it can be done. Yes. Let's not lose hope. A Let's captain, not lose my hope. Captain, hopefully the ship sinks on them one well, soon. I, I looked. I looked. So there's the Millsaps College Majors in Mississippi. No hockey team. Washington Elite Generals. I don't know why I didn't think of that. They're rather close. Uh, no hockey team, to my knowledge, that I found. And there are no colleges with the nickname of the Admirals. I was not aware. I figured Admirals would be a pretty, uh, really? pretty good there's one. Really? There's no Admirals? Oh, there's the Norfolk Admirals uh, and the Milwaukee Admirals in the AHL, but there are no universities or colleges with the nickname of Admirals. According to the research I did in the three minutes we had while the commercials played far too many times. And, and, and you also used Wikipedia, which... It's a good it's starting a point, but it's not uh, uh, you, right, you, you try to write any paper, and any teacher's well, going to tell you you can't use Wikipedia. There are arguments that I make for the power of the people. But anyways, I digress. We will start off four on four in the box. It looks like Tony Cordova, uh, Sevi Cordova and uh, number 16 for uh, Christopher Newport, which is Alex Howell uh, for oh, those yeah, extracurriculars. Okay. We'll go to that, uh, drop the puck, and the rest of the action right after this. Welcome back, sports fans. The third period of play begins now. Christopher Newport will win it back in their own zone. Four-on-four four action. And a quick play for Lovejoy in front. Shot save made on the kick. Lovejoy still slopping at it, but it's taken away now. I don't know if that was a half point. I think it was an actual kick save. Know, and it was a butte. That puck just stopped on the ice and just didn't move. And back the other way now is knocked off of his feet and sent into the end boards. Will be a Christopher Newport player. Still too busy admiring. Honestly, I'm still admired by. It. It's kind of funny. The puck. He went to puck, pass the puck, and it just stopped in a, in a spot on the ice. And the guy lifted at it like twice because he expected it to just keep going at him. It hits a wet spot. That's what happens. You know, <laughs> not much you can do about it. 1935 remains here in the third. Five-one your score. Face off one cleanly by the Patriots. Going to go back for Nick Baker. Baker. In his own zone. And again, it's stuck. They, wait, they didn't wait long enough for the ice to freeze. Or they need that puck to freeze. One or the other. Baker carries the mail. Round behind it goes. So round to the near side. Drops it back off for Dylan Talbot. Talbot couldn't hang on. It's around over the far side where it goes through for David Walsh. Walsh along that far side, tic-tac-toe effort, will come through. Played off. Danny Langlau will have it through. And round behind the net. Langlau still with it. Big hit comes from Dylan Talbot. He's knocked off the puck, but it's still for the captains. Over the far side, kept in by Louis Addison. Nick Baker from behind his own net. 18.40 remains, 39 seconds remains on that four-on-four. Four. Long toss intercepted by Mills. Mills takes the shot. Thanks to Baker's diving effort, it's up over the cage. Going after will be Aaron Shields. Sends it up and out. Going all the way after will be TJ Corvetti. 20 seconds remains on the four-on-four. Four. Corvetti with that, working the breakout from his own zone, four-on-four. Four. Mills will have it, kicks it to a stick. Swings over to the far side. Lots of pressure on from Brian Bach. It's centered through. Pejal will stop it. Pejal with it now. Over to Bach, near side. He surveys his options to the near side, trying to find Guiney. Nothing to him. Back through it goes. Bach with it. We'll leave it off. Bach will play it to the far side. Back now to the near side boards for Mandeville. Bach will drive it into the zone, but he's knocked off of it quickly. Lovejoy will have it. Mandeville trying to step up to it. Now finally, Pejal will get a chance from center red. He'll clear it in. Over to that far side. Big hit. We're going to have a delayed penalty call. Too many men on the ice. Against yeah, watch the referee uh, Against uh, Christopher Newport. 
Well, looks like we'll have a chance here to see if George Mason can step back into this contest. It's 5 to 1, 17 22 remains here in the third. Now, Johnny, you know, is anything different about part of the uniform of George Mason? They have their, are you talking about the patch, the Blue Ridge Hockey Conference nope. patch? They have a nod spot below the logo. No, there's something a little bit different I think they're doing. Well, they always had the black pants. Oh, you talking about the uh, skate laces for breast yes. cancer awareness? Yes, they're all wearing pink or bright, you know, pinkish color laces. It is a uh, a valuable thing to raise awareness for, absolutely. Uh, as it comes back, have we gotten any, any official word on that from Coach Hijack? Um, I mean, I, I assume just something, just something I noticed that uh, everyone that's been out has had pink laces. I'm sure there's some information on George Mason's website. Uh, do check it out, and if if there's a place to donate, please do. It's a great cause. Uh, minute 20 remains on the man advantage for the George Mason University Patriots goes over for Brian Bach Bach unable to hang on and it's caught out of the air by Nick Baker takes a shot, Ooh, went off of his mask and played right in front, now we're on behind the net, George Mason from behind the net is Mandeville, Mandeville is upended referee looking right at it, doesn't seem to see a call, cleared up and no one's caught on the air by Baker again. He's playing shortstop out there. Far side it goes. Tony Cordova sends it away. Put Mandeville in front. Shot. And it's in somewhere on Dumas. And in the paraphernalia, he's going to hang on. Wasn't it 4 on 4 to start? The period? Yes. So the dives are still on the bar, unless it was, they have ten, uh, might be ten. Yeah, it might be 10 minute misconducts. The game tens. Two and tens. I just, uh, if it was four and four, I expect it, you know, it would have been a, five, a four on three then. And it, that, um, it's been a long day. Yeah, there's two men still in the box. Well, three total. One extra for Christopher Newport for another 45 seconds. Played up and out too far for Baker. I think the uh, linesman might have actually gotten in the way of that one. Yeah, just, just a scotch. As is played by Whalen, he'll leave it off for Brian Buck. Buck will carry the mail. Sends over the far side for Nick Baker. Centering pass through for Mandeville. Mandeville looking. Dangles. No, it's caught on a skate. Stepping up there was Talbot. Couldn't hang on. Up and out. Waylon will have it. He'll send it ahead for Bach. 15 seconds remains on the power play as Bach swings around behind the net. Far side for Baker. Went off of the toe of his stick. And uh, he's not going to be able to hang on. Five seconds remain. And... Christopher Newport dangerous on the uh, man disadvantage. They had two shorthanded attempts and scored on one of them. Nearly a slew foot at the blue line. It's back the other way now. Over from Mandeville. He'll play it deep. Five-a-side hockey now. We're going to have an offsides call against the Patriots. Oh. The, the uh, 50 so referees here in the uh, <laughs> audience thought that there should have been something called there. But so far, with only five minutes gone in the third, they have, again... Doubled it more, or uh, I guess it'd be half their shots now. Tripled it. Triple oh, their their original the original first value, yeah. yeah. I was they, like, had wait a minute. they had six. They have ten now. Yeah, I'm saying they're already over. Fuck out of play. I said to double it again would be twelve. Right. I'm, uh, so you're, will be the you're a math teacher. I, I'm, I'm, so I'm saying they're tripling <laughs> their original their, amount. Their original first period. They amount. were averaging three shots per period, and they already have passed their average. Oh, five okay, now I understand. The mean, okay. The arithmetic mean? Compared to the... I don't know, but they always write arithmetic mean. It's, it's like prior to the snap, fall, start, as opposed to what? Indoor or outdoor lights, as opposed to what? There's a difference. Indoor or outdoor use only? Yeah. It's how the wires are insulated. What's... A, what's Indoor, like for, outdoor, for and what? What's the third option? There's either indoor or outdoor. Well, I'm just saying, if you're saying indoor or outdoor, because you, you can have indoor only, which doesn't have the special insulation in it that keeps water out, or you have outdoor, or you can have one that can be used for both. I think we've hit full Bob Airy right now. Full Bob Airy. We have completely derailed. There's a game going on. 1437 yeah, remains in the third. a couple times before we get to full Bob Airy. <laughs> well... We'll talk about how I played with Mario back in the day. That's how you get full Bob Barry. I wonder if there's any Penguins fans even watching to get that. <laughs> As it's played through and over the far side, 5-1 still your score in favor of Christopher Newport here in the third period of play. 
Quick shot on net from the down low angle. Save made by Eric Dumas. So, um, a little, little bit more about history about Christopher Newport. You know, he was he was the, the gentleman that had the unsuccessful cor uh, coronation of the Indian Chief's daughter, Pocahontas. I did not know that. Yeah. Back along the near side it goes. Going to be played off by Jeff Egan. Egan still digging for it along with Dan Vecchio. He's going to be dragged down. Uh, no call there. As back around the near side. Played off Max Horner to the far side boards. Slipping through the defense is another captain. I can't seem to get a number on him. As it's back the other way now. Danny Gassel will play it ahead for Vecchio. Can't seem to make the connection. Back in that near side corner. Centering play, and we're going to have a penalty called against Christopher Newport. Looks like we're going to have another interference with 13.33 remaining here in the third. Well, George Mason has some good looks on their power play at least, so I mean, then maybe this is just going to hopefully feed into their confidence if they can just keep the power play, you know, maybe even get that power play goal. They've done everything okay so far. They just have to get that one, that biscuit in the net. David Walsh is the one that's getting called with the penalty. Two minutes. <laughs> Cleared up, but not out. It's kept in by Baker. He'll center it through for Bach. Bach can't get a hand on it. Finally will. Come back to the near side for Talbot. Talbot, cross ice to Baker. Far point. Takes the shot. It sails wide. Talbot going after now on the near side. No Bach can retrieve it. He puts it down to Talbot. Cross to Baker. No, pass way too hard there. It's intercepted by Voloski takes the shot from a long ways away. He was looking for the hat trick. Talbot will take it. That pass had way too much mustard on it. Back through goes Tony Cordova. He'll take the shot off the blocker. A sneaky one there. Goes over for Nick Baker. who will send it just a bit too high. Minute 15 remains here on the power play for the Patriots. I mean, Waylon's only faced one shot, so... He's kind of happy about that right now. At least he's not the one being uh, having the fire in his kitchen all the time. Inundated. Face off one by the Patriots, but can they hold on to it? Inker will re-corral that puck as comes to Talbot on the near side. He sends it over to Baker. Baker, one touch it to Bach. Bach can't get a handle on it. Kicks it over to Talbot near side. 58 seconds remains. Talbot. Puts it in front. Oh, a good opportunity for Mandeville. Couldn't connect on it just the way he needed to. Back through for Talbot. Takes the shot. Send over to the far side now. Baker will put it. And he couldn't get much on it. Cleared up. And into the bench from Caleb Delterio. Nearly knocked out his coach. I was going to say, Christopher Newport must be mad at his coach. He tried to hit him dead on. Bullseye right between the eye. <laughs> As the cameraman said, that is not the way to get more playing time. Thank you, Ryan Shepard, on the camera. No. He's Unless you're trying to gun for the coach's job, I mean. <laughs> it's not a coup, okay? It doesn't work that way. I mean, I know Christopher Newport was from 17th century England, but it's no longer the king is dead, long live the king. Back through for Pejal. He'll start the breakout from deep in his own zone. 30 seconds remains on the five on four. Near side it goes for Pouliot, and they're going to whistle him off sides. 21 seconds now remain. Eleven fifty-four remains here in the third period of play. Face off one straight up in the air. We'll go over for David Guiney. He's forced into the boards before it's retrieved and sent out. Pejao will stop it at center red. Retreats to his own blue line and uh, trying to find some space. Sends it over the far side for Shields. Aaron Shields will flip it in on goal. Steered aside, and that will end the man advantage. 11 27 here as it's trapped in the near side corner. Bouncing puck still in that near side corner. Finally, will come loose. Long toss. Slapped down and still some on it. 
Back through for Lovejoy. Trying to steal it away was Yawn, and he couldn't hang on. Back through it goes. And now Horner on the turnover. Looking for the backhand. Quick shot. Save made by Whalen. He hung on to on that one. A bad turnover again. He went from backhand to forehand of the last second, and Whalen saw it through. Is that through the legs? Oof. Hey, dirty. At least the power play has looked good. Because once the power play is over, they kind of let the steam, you know, they're making careless mistakes at the moment. Well, you don't want the wheels to come off the wagon. I think, I think some of these players are starting to see what the, uh, the scoreboard is starting to weigh on them a bit. We'll see if maybe the captains can breathe some life back into this team. It's played over the far side for Garrett Pohl, working into the man. I mean, all it takes is one big save, one big hit, or you know the best option, a goal, and it's all a whole different mentality. Danny Gassel will chip one. Oh, a sneaky one. Snuck over the glove, but over the top of the net. Daniel Gassel nearly had one. Back through just a bit too far for Ashton Rogers. Has played off the side of the cage and behind. Rogers still going after it. Mr. Rogers digging as it goes back over the far side. Dan Vecchio. Through for Brian Bach. He carries his way through. Bach takes the shot right into the gut there and is going to be hung on to by Eric Dumas. Ten minutes even remains here in the third. I see the Mason player and the Newport player were just standing there and be like, why won't you just be my neighbor? Potomac, uh, uh, George Mason University Hockey is sponsored by the Spine and Joint Institute. Located in Fairfax, Virginia, they focus on family wellness, sports medicine, and your chiropractic needs. Call to make your appointment at 703-994-4874. Visit them on the web, sjsu.com for more details. Big hit on the far side as I was finishing my read. It comes through dangled, Mills shot, sails it way high as Whalen tried to stack the pads. Whew. That's a very interesting save, attempt to a save on Waylon. I mean, at least he's uh, providing Wait, some good acrobatic moves. You, you try and cover everything down low that you can. The problem with the, the stack pads is your recovery time is awful. So if you commit to it, that better be the end of the play. Played up and out. It's going to go through for uh, Drew Cohen. Round behind the net. There was a time when the stack pads was really the only option of a goaltender way back in the 1940s and 50s. Over to the far side. Back through, goes on the near side boards. Don't most goalies wear stack pads? No, no, no as opposed to butterfly. The butterfly goaltending uh, style wasn't invented until Glenn Hall did it in the 1950s. Gotcha. Cleared over the far side boards. George Mason will go off for a change. We have nine minutes and seven seconds remaining here in the third. Five one year score in favor of the Christopher Newport captains. Back through it goes again. A chance coming for Shane Keel on the backhand. Plays it back for Yawn. Trying to get a bit too fancy there. Goes for Keel and pushed by a handful of players. Three players were back behind that George Mason net at one point trying to isolate Shane Keel. It's up and out of the zone, but it's played right back in. Garrett Pullen. The, the Patriots are just trying to pile up at this point and look for revenge. And it's, uh, it's getting sloppy. We're getting two guys on, on a, any player. Uh, and granted, it's, it's working right now, but. It's, uh, it's not what you want to see. Rob behind the net. I mean, I guess if it works, I'm not going to question. Mandeville, far side. Time, we're going to have the long clear for the icing. It, it's times like these that try men's souls. You know, it's, this is where you look for that heart. You got to try and dig down and uh, stay disciplined. Because it's not easy to go out there and be losing to a big rival when they've managed to pack your rink uh, as full as your team has. And uh, it's not, a, not an easy situation to play in this. And it's the, the people who can maintain their poise in a game like this. Those are, those are the, true, the true champions. It takes, it takes a lot of heart. Quick shot, save made. Rebound came and it was taken away by the defense. Back through goes for Mandeville. Takes the shot off of a skate and wide. Puck bouncing quite a bit as it's played off the stick on the far side. Carried off there by Langlaw. Takes the shot. Save! Made the glove! Waylon will hang on to this one. He's sure not out of this game. 
Well, he, he, he can't because if he, if he was out of this game, this his score would be a lot higher at this point. He's made some spectacular saves this evening. Seven forty-seven remains here in the third. Five-one, your score in favor of Christopher Newport. Baker will play it round behind. It goes off for Andrew Nash to the far side for Baker. Baker dangles his way around Mills. Dangles his way again. Puts a touch, one touch over the near side. Ahead for Egan. Egan puts it to the net. Puck bounces off of the stick and it's back up for Nash. Quick shot, bouncing through. Pinching in his gas, so couldn't get much on it, not in time. Back through again. Bouncing stick was launched away. As Mills was carrying the, the mail here and it goes through again. Now Ryan Brown deep in territory. Puck bounced right in front. Not even sure how it worked there that quickly. Cleared the length of the ice. We're going to have icing. No, it's going to be waved off. George Mason will have a chance to change their lines. 6.50 remains in the third. It's, it's picked up there by Talbot. Puck says he'll be picked up by him. We're going to have a delayed penalty call. It's going to come on George Mason. Did he got a hook? Yeah, I think so. If, if I could hear him, I think. For the most part, I've been able to hear him all night, but uh, I didn't see that much of a hook. If I only didn't we either. had replay. A telestrator. Well, yes, when, when I get that $100,000 budget. You know how I expect... I, I, replay. Instant replay is the white whale of, a, of the uh, broadcaster. It's so much you either need multiple people or lots of equipment. It's not easy. As it kept in the Patriot zone, finally chipped out by Pei Zhao. Good stand-up effort there. Daniel Gasso in the box for hooking. As Newport will step back in. Over the far side it goes. Where it comes for Alex Velosky. Velosky uh, to the far side corner. Langlaw centering it through. Quick shot that came from Horner. Save made by Whalen. Up top it goes for Cohen. Another shot. That one came from Horner again. Down low for Velosky. To the near side corner. Centering effort will go cross ice. Ryan Fleisch will have it played on the near side for Horner. Up top for Cohen. Cohen, lots of pressure coming there from Mike Morris. Good play right there. Down low it goes for Velosky. He has two on the night. For Langlow, plenty of assists. Up top now for Cohen. Takes the clapper right into the skate of Shields. He managed to get it up and out, but... Oh, Cohen will smother him. We're going to have some extra curriculum behind the play. Oh, I'm sorry, that was Vecchio. Meanwhile, down by the play, Mike Morris is giving chase, putting lots of pressure on and doing a great job of it. Pass to the near side for Horner. Back, quick shot, saving. Oh, it trickles in. Ryan Fleisch got it back, and they're trying to pass it across. Whalen couldn't, couldn't get back to it, and it just trickled into the net. It's going to be 6-1, to one, your score on the power play. Not the way he wanted to see that one go. And Whalen, he was there the whole time. He just couldn't get back on that last effort. Unfortunately, I think, I kind of thought that, that was going to happen eventually because you, you, saw, you saw a lot tonight, Whalen, when he's going from post to post, just kind of overshooting it. I don't know if it was the ice or something, and you knew at one time he's gonna, it was going to overshoot it by accident and just it was going to trickle in. And that is heartbreaking. That, that goal is a backbreaker. We'll have the face-off won by the Patriots. Shields will play it over for pole. Five minutes and five seconds is when that goal was scored. Horner will get the goal. Ryan Fleisch the assist. I honestly think uh, Ryan Fleisch was the last one to touch it, but I'm not a referee. But over the far side, Tony Cordova trying to stymie it. He finally will get that puck back. Lofts it into the zone, which can be stopped by Corvetti. Near side it goes for Langlaw. Leaves it off for Shane Keel. 
bouncing puck up and out. And one of those turnover moments as Shields will battle back to it. Keel will play it back in. Shields will go retrieve it. No, it's going to be pole. Wayland, uh, a, a posture of aggression as a man got in front of him. Man came into the crease and... I, I mean, I, I've never been attacked by a snake, but I imagine that's what a rattlesnake looks like when it's coiled up. I was scared, and I'm up here. Far side. Got to do something to keep those uh, Newport players off them. <laughs> oh, and the shot will go top shelf on Wayland again. 7-1, your score, just a sneaky one. And Wayland, oh, oh I feel for him. 348 remains in the third. Shots now are 24 to 15. So George Mason has doubled now. A little bit more than double. There's shots from the second you know, from the second period. But they're just, they're just not getting that much action action on the net. They I mean it, it, it's I guess it has to be that it's the neutral zone game that's failing because they can't get offense started, let alone to finish. So Ashton Rogers got the goal, assisted by Alex Howell. Over the far side, quick shot from Mills. Save made by Whalen. 3.18. Oh, and you can tell Whalen's jawing now. He's uh, chirping. He's, he's chirping, all right, yeah. Hey, and, that, and that's just it. You know, I've, I've been on the losing end of quite a few games uh, in, in multiple sports. I know what it's like. It's rough, especially against a rival. It's hold your head high and, and finish the game. Hold That's your all you can do. And got to hold your composure. Yes. Maintain your poise, my coach always said. Maintain your poise. Played through for Brian Bach. He can't seem to dangle his way through. Puck comes through, and it's played by Newport. Off for Ryan Brown. And it goes for Jeff Egan. He fanned on it the first time, got it through the second. Will Edler out there trying to get to that puck. Caught out of the air by Egan. He didn't even realize he caught it. Egan carries it now. Round behind the net. Puck slips off of his stick, but he gets back to it. Nope, not for the second time. Up and out by Newport. Carrying will be Ryan Brown. It's taken off of his stick by Bach. Ooh, and Bach will take a, a bit of an effort to the face there. Referee was uh, trying to avoid the stick himself. Couldn't see the call. Back up and out. Peijiao will chase it down. We get the icing call. No, it's going to be waved off. Peijiao will carry. Going to watch now. They're not really calling anything. They're kind of letting them play defenders' game. And so a little bit of chir chippiness is going on right now. And, and I understand the idea of you know let just let the clock tick away, but uh, you got to make sure that nothing bad's happening out there. Newport will take it from there, and it's over the far side. Played up by Dylan Gear. Gear knocked down on the far side. Minute 48 remains here in the third. 7-1 your score in favor of Christopher Newport. Oh, a player hurt in front of the bench. That's, uh, I think that's Kyle Yawn slowly crawling over the dasher. That's not good. I don't even think he was the one who was knocked down, but I, I don't know. He caught something up high, according to the cameraman. But, ugh. Far side, Shields carrying it up ice. Minute 20 remains. Quick shot. Covered up there. There's a bit of a crowd on the far bench around, I believe it's Kyle Yon. I feel like they're checking his collar at some point. Yeah, he's like grabbing like he at the neck or collar area. Maybe you got a stick up in there or something. Certainly possible. Looks, oh, we, we're going to have a, a penalty call, a high stick. Five minute. A five minute high stick. Did he call it late uh, or? Uh, 
Oh, okay. Well, I, I'm glad that you have your officials' credentials now. Uh, the linesman saw the call, but the linesman cannot blow it dead. But the linesman can call a play. He can he call a penalty, but he cannot blow the play dead. So this is the first stoppage, and the linesman called that high stick uh, from behind the play. And that was when it kicks in. Okay. We talked about that earlier today, too, actually. Yeah, I did not know that uh, piece of it. Shot near side. So David Guiney in the box for a five-minute high sticking. 55 seconds remains in the third. And the all-you-can-score buffet, I don't think it's going to matter. Say that. Don't think it's going to matter at this point. 50 seconds left. 7-1 your score. And uh, <laughs> hopefully in this score buffet, the other team is already too fat. So yes, we're saying you know more, you need to go home. Yes. double. Back through it goes. Quick shot, and they will score. So much for that with a tic-tac-toe. And uh, Christopher Newport celebrating like it was the game winner. I mean, maybe it's one of those guys who doesn't usually score. I don't know. I don't have the statistics on hand. Uh, I think it's Louis Addison who scored it. Wasn't he the one that's injured? No, no. That, no, it's going to be Chad Shaw. Well, Chad Shaw was the one who was showered with praise, so... Right, but I'm I was saying, like, who was the one that was injured then from the... I, I think, think it was nine. I think it was Kyle Yon. Okay. I thought it was his first goal or something. Hard to say. 25.9 seconds remains here in the third. 8-1 your score. Still on the power play for the rest of this. Uh, major penalty does not come off the board. It was Chad Shaw. Alex Howell will get the assist. And Corvetti will get the second assist. We have just 10 seconds remaining here in the game. The play along the near side getting through will be Ashton Rogers bouncing puck over the far side. And that's how it's going to wrap up. But we're going to have a hit at the end. Daniel Gassel put a man down, but I think it was just incidental contact. And I think they're going to let it go as such. Oh, there's a little pushing and shoving. Whalen getting in on it. Someone got a little too close to Whalen. Probably said something. I mean, how do you know from up here? And the referees, I think, are actually going to stop the handshake. I think they're just sending him off. I think there's. There might be a DQ on that one. I don't know. Or they're, or they're arguing, no, we want to shake hands. I can't tell the difference. I mean, now it kind of looks civil. All, so. all speculation at this point. Well, uh, even with that score, certainly an interesting ending. No doubt about that. And when we, when we get to our post-game analysis, I mean, there's... That some stuff that needs work done, but there's some decent stuff, and there's some. Go look at the positives. I'm sure that you know that first X practice, you know, coming up this week. Um, there's gonna be some talking about some of those things, but there's some positives. Yeah, no, absolutely, and yeah, that's just it. You have to look at the positive aspects of this. Uh, I know it's a tough loss, but there is always something good you can come out of it, and hopefully, coach can use the game film and uh, go from there. Yeah, it's right. actually intact. Last time it wasn't intact. Well, 8-1, to one, your final score is the Christopher Newport University captains will triumph over the George Mason University Patriots. I'm John Baranowski. With me is Philip Prevost. Join us for the post-game show right after this. Welcome back, sports fans. John Baranowski here with Philip Prevost. Uh, eight to one, the final score. Couldn't let that run off. Uh, had to use the power play at the end to get that last one in with just 25 seconds left. Uh, tough loss. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm kind of speechless. It's I was not expecting the team that we saw a couple weeks ago 
just wasn't a team out there today. Um, so, I mean, it was a surprise to me, uh, probably to a lot of people, probably to the team. Um, but you have you got you got you got to go to practice. You have to see. Okay, this is what we did bad on. Let's fix it. And here's the positive: there's things that we you know just have to keep doing. Uh, the power play, even though they didn't score on the power play, it looked good. It did look good. Uh, I mean, I think I think what it came down to is the neutral zone game was not uh, able to get through. They couldn't hang on a possession for long enough to set things up. I think George Mason, uh, aside from the power plays, got set up maybe a total of three times in enemy territory and actually get uh, a system set up, a cycle going. It was rare. Uh, stuff like that goes a long way. And I think to, to prove that, I mean, look at the shots. In the first period, they had three. Uh, three more in the second. And then finally, they broke out with nine in the third. Uh, nine, yeah. Yeah. Math, math, yeah, 15 they finished with. Okay. Yeah, so I'm just making sure my math is correct. Um, so uh, at least they got a little bit more pressure, um, but by the time the game came around, um, and towards the end, um, it was all nice and all, but uh, they do end with the L in today's game. And, and that's just it. You know, a loss by one and a loss by seven, it doesn't make a difference in the standings. I mean, I'm sure when you come down to tiebreakers, but let's face it, that's, that's a long way off. Um, you know, and that's just it. You got to think a loss is a loss, move on, next game. It, it, as my dad always said, if you're going to lose, you might as well lose big because the tough loss is the one you lose by one. That's true. There, there's a lot of truth to that and that, you know, it's you were, they didn't really have a chance to get in that game. They were down 3 nothing early. That A goal with 40 seconds left in the first is the only tally on the board. Um, I mean, the, the toughest thing is that it came against a rival. Yeah. It really is the hardest part of all of it. And, you know, the Cordovas are two of the more... Uh, offensive-minded people, and Christopher Newport had a answer for them today. They had their number. They did. Yes, they they, they did. made sure they were isolated. They didn't get the puck enough. Uh, they couldn't get to the puck enough. Um, and I mean, that's just it. It's That dimension was completely taken away, and it, it, it didn't leave enough left. So there's, and there's a lot of things, uh, obviously, to work on, but we saw great things from the team in our last broadcasts. Uh, they've done great things uh, we, when we weren't there, when they were out on the road. It's all a matter of moving on. You know, they lost to Liberty. You got to move on. They lost to Christopher Newport. You got to move on yeah. because it's the next game that matters. Right. It's the only game that matters. Right. So it's it's a tough loss, but uh, sometimes that's the cost. Yeah, and a learning experience. I mean, you got you got to take the positives and move on with it. And you know, hey, you get blown out today. Fine. Then you have. You know, a, re a really strong rival like uh, James Madison, and maybe that will be enough to kick it in gear. And as you say, the worst team to go against is the team that's been embarrassed. So uh, let's see if it's a rolling victory next uh, game. Uh, we will be on the air next week, Saturday. I believe it's an 11.30 a.m. game. It's a Kettler, right? Yes, it's, it's at the Kettler Ice Arena, a road game for us, uh, against George Washington University uh, in the morning, 11.30 a.m. Uh, and let's hope that our feed is uh, good, because I'm pretty sure they're only going to let us on Wi-Fi. We'll see. Uh, we'll investigate that. And, uh, well, I mean, you can join us here on CrossIceFeed.com. Uh, so thank you for tuning in. We appreciate those of you who are sticking with us. And uh, well, I guess hopefully you'll, we'll see you all here next week. I'm John Baranowski. He's Philip Prevost. Good night, everybody.